The third and final book in the Aftermath trilogy, Empire's End, comes out today. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what I thought about it, tell you whether or not I think it's worth reading, and I'm going to keep it completely spoiler-free. So let's start with the most important question, is it worth reading? I would say absolutely yes, but I also want you to keep in mind that I was in the minority that enjoyed the first Aftermath book quite a bit. Uh, most people did not look too favorably on that one. And then Life Debt came out and more people seem to enjoy that one. I think that Empire's End definitely continues that trend of improving on the previous books. I would argue that this one is the best book of the trilogy, but you know, if you had a different opinion on the original two Aftermath books, just keep that in mind as you watch the rest of this. A lot of people have taken issue with Chuck Wendig's writing style, and I would agree that the use of second person, that whole present tense thing, it's an odd choice, and it did take me some getting used to every time I started Aftermath or Life Debt and Empire's End. But I think that Life Debt, it wasn't so bad. Empire's End, it didn't bother me. I mean, part of that is just that I was ready for it. I knew what to expect, but the first Aftermath book was a lot of like really short descriptions in like onomatopoeia, just explosion noises at, used as sentences. It was kind of just short and choppy and jarring. Empire's End did not feel that way to me. I just think it was handled better in this book. In fact, I can specifically remember one scene near the end of the book where I think the present tense actually worked in its favor. It was very effective. It made me feel like I was there with the characters, learning what they were learning as they were learning it, experiencing what they were seeing. It just unfolded very well. My heart was pounding. Tension built incredibly well. I, I really do think that this is the most well-written book of the trilogy. Speaking of the characters, I've always been pretty much a fan of the main cast from the start. Sinjir, I remember, was a huge standout for me in the first book. I was always on board with him. I don't feel like he got as much to do. He wasn't as funny, or I didn't just connect to him as well as I did in the first two books. But I do think that other characters got their chance to shine, especially Ray Sloan. She was used very well as a Grand Admiral without an Empire. I felt for her. It's always good when you can take someone who's been an antagonist and kind of twist them around, make you sympathize with them. She's, I mean, she was a protagonist in Life Dead as well, but even more so here. In fact, I think she was so well handled that it made me kind of root against one of the main protagonists, Nora Wexley. Her whole arc in this book is she wants to find and kill Ray Sloan because Sloan has gotten away from Nora in both of the other two books. So like this time she's out for blood and it kind of made me root against her because I liked Sloan so much that I didn't want Nora to go get her revenge. Like I understood her motivations and everything, but I was like, Nora, cool it. Like Sloan is all right. And I know that Nora doesn't know that, but uh, it just was kind of odd that I I wasn't really on board with one of the protagonists. Talking about Sloane brings me to my next point, which is what I think is the greatest strength of this book, and that's just its connection with the rest of the universe. Say what you will about Chuck Wendig and his writing style or his story ideas, but I think it's clear that he cares a lot about Star Wars, and he takes a lot of time to research things that he can include when they make sense. I don't think he overdid it. There were a couple of references that may have fallen flat, but I appreciate the effort to really make Star Wars feel like a big, cohesive universe. And Sloane is a perfect example of that because she was created for A New Dawn by John Jackson Miller. And as far as I know, no one told Wendig, like, you have to use Sloane. And she is like a fan favorite character because she's appeared in quite a few things, but I think a lot of that is due to Aftermath and him using her after A New Dawn. And she's appeared in short stories and comics, and she has such a great arc over the course of like 20 years. And I think that's fantastic. And he chose a lot of other things from other books and the comics. And it's not like he just focused on, all right, we're just going to look at the novels and see what I can pick and choose. Like, no, he looked at everything that made sense and if it also made sense to include in his story, he did it, and I really appreciate that. 
All that said, the book is not perfect. There are a couple of moments of convenience, there are some cheesy lines of dialogue, but nothing so egregious that I ever was like, I need to put this book down. Basically, every time I wasn't reading Empire's End, I was sitting at work wishing that I could read Empire's End, and to me, that's the mark of a good story. If you liked Aftermath or Life Debt, you will definitely like this one. If you didn't, but you want to get some tantalizing hints about the future of Star Wars and The Last Jedi, or just get the full story of the Battle of Jakku, which I thought was very cool, you might want to consider checking this out. If you're on the fence about spending your money on this, well hey, maybe you'd like to get the audiobook for free. The Empire's End audiobook is out now, and you can get it for free by clicking on the link in the description, or by going to www.audibletrial.com slash starwarsexplained. If you sign up for a trial, you'll get a credit for one free book, and you can use it on Aftermath Empire's End, or a number of other Star Wars books. Or get any book you want. The point is, you get a free book, and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. That's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to see new Star Wars videos every single day, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.